Hey, let's talk about cardiac arrest. Picture yourself arriving on scene as an ALS provider with a BLS partner on a cardiac arrest. Let's make this a nice, simple, easy, run-of-the-mill arrest, nothing tricky, nothing weird. Uh, there's a BLS fire department on scene first, bystander CPR led to first responder CPR. There was an AED placed and one shock has been delivered prior to arrival. How do you prioritize your actions with you, your BLS partner, and a BLS fire department on scene? My name is Angry Bill. I'm with uh, Pre-Hospital Wisdom, uh, where we look at the skills, uh, knowledge, culture of uh, pre-hospital providers. So let's talk about this cardiac arrest concept. The way I see it, there's four main tasks that I need to prioritize in the initial phases of a cardiac arrest. I need to get a story uh, and uh, formulate a plan. I need to get an EKG, figure out what rhythm I'm dealing with, figure out what algorithm I'm on. Uh, I need to make sure an airway is in place, uh, whether it be BLS or ALS. And finally, I need to get IV or IO access. That way I can start to administer medications. All of this is understanding that that, that previous BLS stuff that was already done is absolutely the most important. I do believe that cardiac arrest is a BLS problem. It's a BLS skill. Good, high quality CPR with minimal interruptions, of course. Uh, that's something that, that we need to have established. AED or early defibrillation, of course. That's why I, I uh, set up that, that process initially. So assuming that you have uh, good high quality CPR going on when you arrive and an AED has been placed, even in this scenario, shock's been delivered. So let's prioritize myself and my partner on those four main tasks. How do I do that initially? Well, first of all, when I talk about the story and the plan, that's something that has to be done by me as the attending paramedic. If I'm working with a paramedic partner and it's their turn to attend, then it's their job. That's fine. Someone needs to take in this story, patient age, patient name. I always forget about that. That's important too. Patient age, uh, gender, medical history, the story going on with this. How long have they been down? When were they last seen? Have they been recently sick, recently injured? Uh, are there advanced directives? All of those things to formulate a plan. What's going on with this patient with this cardiac arrest right now? Uh, the second one with the EKG, um, I need to figure out whether or not I'm dealing with an asystolic patient or a, a VFib patient. Or do I? Do I need to know that initially? I'm not sure that I actually do. With an AED in place, we're dealing with shockable, non-shockable, and that's fine for the time being. So I'd actually deprioritize the EKG placement down a little bit lower. Yes, eventually I'm gonna want a four lead and eventually I'm gonna want a 12 lead, especially if I get pulses back, all of those things. But for right now, when I first walk in the room, having an AED in place is, is okay. The airway, <clears throat> are my uh, first responders maintaining the airway well? I need to make sure that we're not blowing up the stomach uh, need to make sure there's airway adjuncts, whether it's an NPA or an OPA or whatever it is. Um, I don't need an advanced airway at this time. Uh, so my BLS partners uh, can place an eye gel certainly under my direction as I'm sitting there watching them. I might not even need that for the first few minutes if, if I'm getting good ventilation the way uh, 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 with BLS adjuncts, the, the, the way it's set up. And then that leads me down to IV or IO access. So I'd make the argument that even though I don't think pre-hospital IV access is all that important in most calls, I'm fairly unlikely to start IVs in a lot of patients, uh, even patients where, where people would normally start IVs like seizure patients and stuff. I don't think they necessarily need it. Um, we could talk about that later in another video or something. Uh, but I think in this case, tasking my partner uh, to focus on the IV or IO uh, makes a lot of sense. That's something for my partner to be able to take care of that's within their BLS scope of practice. That's within uh, the, the scope of the BLS protocols in the system I work in, hopefully the system you work in as well. Um, <clears throat> and essentially then deprioritizing the EKG and the airway, which also makes sense. I'm not saying ignore them forever. I'm saying deprioritize them for two to four minutes that's okay. I think that makes the most sense. If the patient's pulseless, does it matter what rhythm they're in? Or can I start a IV and push a milligram of epi? Works for asystole, works for VFib, works for VTAC, um, works for PEA. 
here's what ails you. Um, so I don't necessarily need to see it for a few minutes. Uh, same thing with the airway, especially if I could drop an eye gel real quickly. Uh, a more advanced airway than that uh, isn't a high priority for, for me. What I need is to control this scene, to control this arrest, to be able to stand back, make sure that, that the CPR pushers are, are, are um, rotating in and out. So some other stuff with uh, cardiac arrests is I am a little bit different than some people in that I don't like to have a tool in my hand. If I have a tool in my hand, I'm not listening and I'm not thinking, I'm not planning, I'm not noticing the other stuff I should be noticing. Uh, I'm not maintaining my timings, um, all kinds of stuff like that. So I personally like to act like the attending trauma surgeon in a big room or the, the ED attending uh, when I drop this patient off. They'll stand at the foot of the patient's bed and direct other people in doing uh, the stuff that the other people can do. Yes, eventually an art line will be placed and a physician needs to do that or whatever, but for the most part, I don't want things in my hands. I want a clear mind in order to uh, uh, be able to think through uh, these issues and, and make sure everyone else is do, doing their job, getting all the information in from other people uh, and getting it to stick. Uh, the second thing is I like to work to pulse or pronouncement. You either get pulses back or I pronounce you. I'm not in a big hurry to move you onto my pram. I'm not in a big hurry to move you to my ambulance and I'm not in a big hurry uh, to get en route to the hospital. The ED doesn't have special magical epi that I don't have. Um, all of these things can be done by me. And um, I think that we do best for brains and, and uh, people in general by staying there and working them with high quality CPR until a, a disposition's been met. In any case, the four main priorities when I first arrive on scene have been arrest is to get the story and make the plan, um, EKG, airway, and IV. Um, I would drop those first two and say my story and my uh, venous access are, are my uh, two most important points. I can get the uh, EKG set up in a few minutes um, and I can get the airway uh, a little bit later uh, if the eye gel is not working especially well. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, share. Sharing especially helps a lot. Once again, this is Angry Bill for Pre-Hospital Wisdom. Until next time, stay safe.